February Madness, and nothing's more maddening than a conference with so many teams that a tournament is not feasible. The best coverage of high school and college athletics in Northeast North Carolina begins now. This is NENC Sports Radio Show on WRVS 89.9. Yeah, that Coastal 100 Conference. The boys figuring it out this week, though, at the very least, uh, who could be the true champion. Not going to really know that for sure until Thursday evening. Uh, glad you're dialed in, though, to another NENC Sports Radio Show. I'm Owen Hassel. Malcolm Shields also with me. Conference tournament time. Yes. For one conference in, in the northeast corner, at least. Uh, a lot of games just Monday and Tuesday alone. Setting up to be a really nice Friday boys and girls final at Northeastern. Also, you can't forget the cheerleaders. Absolutely. Cheerleading championship before the girls and the boys. So that that will also be uh, usually Curry Tuck, Northeastern. Mm-hmm. Those are the teams you see involved. And every year it's like one wins and the other one wins and then they go to some national championship place and then one wins Absolutely. and then it, it, it just it goes back and forth. Like it's almost like they just cut it right down the middle. Mm-hmm. We get ours, you get yours, everyone's happy. Yeah. But I'm sure that'll be uh, usually pretty well attended as well. But hey, let's get more into the show, shall we? Uh, before we do all that, as I said, let's get into the show. Let me get into the part about more on Northeastern North Carolina sports, of course. Follow us on Twitter. Also use the hashtag NENC Sports to keep the discussion rolling. You can follow us at NENC Sports. And for me, I'm at ONOBX, Malcolm. I'm at Malcolm underscore Shields. There's also more ways to stay involved with sports in Northeastern North Carolina in the form of a blog. Go to NENCSports.wordpress.com for more interviews and video from various Northeastern North Carolina games. We'll have more basketball after this. WRVS 899 provides training for all students and volunteers interested in radio broadcasting. But without your donations, this radio station will go silent. Let's make a sound today. Now is a great time to give back to public radio. Make a tax-deductible donation by calling 252-335-3985 or online at www.ecsu.edu slash WRVS. Turn off the lights and light a candle. How can we saw some basketball teams as lights go out? Yes, absolutely. Uh, in the early stages of the Northeastern Coastal Conference basketball tournament. Don't think that's the idea Teddy P had in mind uh, when it came to the lights going out. Hey, it's Valentine's Day week, right? There you go. <laughs> Just give some team some love, right? Hey, you get your lady, listen to little Teddy P. Can't do wrong with that. You cannot do wrong with some Teddy P. There you go. Uh, but I digress. Uh, Edenton Pasquatank boys, both of them are done after losses Monday. Aces definitely had an opportunity against first flight. Uh, lost 51 to 50. And Chad Williams is Nighthawks playing without John King, uh, starting point guard, re aggravated a shoulder injury in that thrilling double overtime loss in Kittleville Hills to Curry Tuck, where Trey Burton once again went off. For the Knights, so it gave Eaton another window. The Aces had a chance here. Had the last shot. Uh, Laverne and Randall set things up, got off the screen, just missed. Uh, unfortunate, this seems to be kind of how the season went mm-hmm. for the Aces. Started out with promise, but it, it started late yeah. thanks to the football season. And that's not any knock on football. That's just what happened. Didn't even get started till December 20th. Lost a, a bunch of overtime games. One, I believe, was five overtimes to Princeton, where Coach Robert Woolley said, oh, and we won it four times. But we lost the fifth time. Fair. I don't understand the logic, but I went with them. So, yeah, a lot of overtime games. Then the weather situation that pushed some games back even more for Edenton. Did for everybody, but Edenton was already playing from behind. 15 games, 30 days. And I know the guys don't want to make excuses all this. I'm just laying out each thing that happened. Uh, even Coach Robert Woodley, not 100%. He, he fell ill and had to miss three or four games himself. Just just at one thing after the other. And then at the, I think at some point you had semesters and, and, and exams coming up in, in January as well, too. Yeah, and you just can't play those days. Yep. Can't practice, can't play those days. Academics number one. So a lot of things just happened to 
make it life make life difficult uh, for Edenton boys basketball and 51-50 loss. It, these teams uh, shared the lead quite a few times. A lot of lead changes in this one. KV on Elliott, monster dunk, one point in the game. That kid has got hops. <laughs> no doubt he's got some hops. But Edenton season done, Pasquotank. Uh, difficult position. Yeah. Malcolm, you saw him play Northeastern on Friday, and then you know where the pairings are going to be yeah. for Monday. Yeah, you got to kind of think when you saw that, especially that, you know, talking with uh, Coach Michael Barlow after the game on Friday night, that they played better the second time around against Northeastern, that, you know, a couple of days later, you know, in your quarterfinal, you got to see the same team from um, in Northeastern again. That's a pretty tough, pretty tough, you know, task for the Panthers, and it showed. Yeah, Shalimar thinks it did not work out. People are going to get that. People are going to get that. You're going to get it. I'm going to move on, but I'm just letting you know. You're laughing. I got you. You're smiling at me thinking, don't do that. I'm just telling you. You're going to get it. Ah, again, Hose Curry Tuck. Uh, well, like I'll say with one more thing about Pass Tech Northeastern, it was tough to watch. Okay. The game seemed to be over when they walked on the court. I'm just calling it like it is. Right. People. It, it, that's what it was. It was hard for anybody to watch. Kind of a shame because you had two great games start in the end mm-hmm. kind of like the girls to a degree which i know you'll get to in a moment for the first round uh, but curry tuck they, they won at first flight friday double overtime probably en- assured the knights of a playoff spot that's how that's how big the win was because they had lost early in the week to pasquatank right when they had the lead after three quarters and then they just shut down trey burton right and not many people have done that right here comes Trey Burton, I think back to back thirty seven point games. Impressive, uh, and yeah. So, however, lose the tournament opener at home in overtime. A lot of overtime games uh, to Bertie. Malcolm, can the, the Knights going to be on the road first round of the playoffs? No doubt. Still not a hundred percent sure you get in. Can they regroup? Can they get a victory in the playoffs? I think so. When you've got a player in Trey Burton who can distribute and who can score the basketball, you always got a chance. I mean, time and time again, when when Curry Tucks needed a big game, for the most part, Trey's delivered. Now to the girls' quarterfinals on Tuesday at Pasquotank. Uh, Northeastern, the the fighting Brianna Proctors. Yes. Uh, Again, she just wills them to win. Mm -hmm. So Northeastern wins, beats first flight. Still fighting for... They can win the tournament. Uh, they get in. They they know that. And kind of like with Trey Burton with Curry, if you got someone like Brianna Proctor of Northeastern, the only difference is you really have that stellar guard right. almost than you would afford. Uh, that, that, that would be the difference there. But Northeastern wins. Uh, Pasquale Tank held off Herford County. And then Edenton beats Curry Tuck in overtime. Yep. The Knights, neither team, in the semis. Dunskies. All right. Hard to believe. Thought for sure the girls yeah, absolutely. could make the best run and maybe frustrate Bertie the most with their style of play. Looking like they were getting as healthy as the Curry Tuck girls could get. because It's been difficult for them, too, with the injuries. But does anyone have a chance against Bertie? Um, out of this conference, I, I can't see it. Bertie's just been at another level consistently um, this season. Um, they've tested themselves in, in non-conference. you got to think that the Lady uh, Falcons are going to go um, pick up another uh, a conference championship on Friday. Here's some playoff projections, and they're pretty wild. Uh, Bertie looks like to be the one, number one overall seed wow. in the East for, for 2A. Uh, only have one loss this year. That was the Riverside, a top five 1A team. So looking like they'd be number one. Pascal Tank second in the conference. 12-8 and eight record. Mm-hmm. I guess you want to count. Tuesday's game, 13-8, and eight, but you only count 20 games. Correct. Uh, some have the Lady Panthers slated to go on the road as a 15 seed. Mm. Uh, what's going on with this? Uh, Winning percentage. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to put my Shaman now out there early, even though I've used it before. Why even have conferences? Why have conferences? Just use the winning percentage of all the teams in two-way, top to bottom, east-west. Put, put them each classification, one, two, three, four, 
and go. Make it easier then. What's what's the prize of, of being a conference champion? What, what, what's what's the prize of being second in a really good conference? And you're playing a tough non-conference schedule, and these other teams are just playing the game. They know that they can get some cupcake wins, mm-hmm. and they'll get a higher seed. The way it's looking now, first flight Curry, Tuck, and Edenton will get better seeds than Pasquotank. All teams below them in the conference standings. They're all going to be on the road, but they'll get better seeds. You know what Pascal Tank's record was against those teams? What's that? Four and two. Wow. Four and two. So the head to head, Pascal Tank did its job. Yes, there's a loss here and there because really Bertie was at such a level and everyone else was kind of, I don't want to say it was just a, a, a rebuilding year for the rest of the league, but it wasn't as strong as it's been the past couple of years where some teams could push Bertie. But it just it blows my mind that you would have. Everyone else in the conference no higher than like a 12 or a 13. Bertie's sitting there one. It just, it, what, what are conferences? What are those things? So, Malcolm, another scenario that I almost failed to mention, mm-hmm. Coastal 10 boys, Absolutely. this crazy conference race that's going on. Requimans beat Gates on Tuesday, 63-59, Dallas Hall 18 points. Dewan Williams, Keenan Downing, and Hall each had 10 rebounds. Malik Leach, five steals, six assists. That's my boy uh, at point guard from a MAG-17. Uh, so, Brequimmons sweeps gates. Brequimmons has to get through Crestville Thursday. That shouldn't be a problem. But it looks like Brequimmons could at least get a share of this conference title. But there's Camden. Uh, it's, it's interesting right now. Uh, who's going to come out? There could be a two-way tie. And unfortunately, if there is a two-way tie, it's going to be a coin flip. You got a situation where there's a conference championship team that could be on the road first round because of the winning percentage. Depends on what are the what are those teams it happens. But uh, right now, Brooklyn's has pretty well done its job. Yeah. And I can't remember the last time Brooklyn's won a basketball conference championship. It's been a number of years. Four Rivers was brutal. Uh, so that would be a huge feather in the cap of uh, Tommy Johnson, Coach Tommy Johnson, just a second year with absolutely, the Pirates. Absolutely. With, with a, a really good group of kids. Uh, but you know what Camden's saying? We can win this. We have won this before. So how amazing if it's a Camden Brequimmons tie absolutely. for that thing. Absolutely. Yeah, the way those teams played each other this year. I want to change gears a little bit here. A lot of people wrote to us. A lot. Yes. Uh, using hashtag Team Malcolm or hashtag Team Owen. A lot of Team Owen. I got to give oh, it up to sure. you. I mean, we knew that. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't have to explain it. We knew it was going to happen. Uh, to your credit, there were some Team Malcolms for the girls. There you go. Got some Team Malcolms for the girls. For yes. the boys, it was all about some Team Owen. Uh, it's got to be at least one out there for me. Uh, Dallas Hall's family. Hey, that's fine. We because be. you had there Dallas you Hall. There you go. That's all that matters. Uh, so... Of course, that was for our, our show last week. We did the kind of like a draft of our top boys and girls basketball teams in the Northeast corner, our Magnificent Seven, as we called it. I had our um, obviously my top seven boys and girls, your top seven boys and girls. We talked about some matchups, how that would be on the court. Really neat. Uh, hey, Lindsay Likens gave me some love. There you go. She was like, oh, one's got it going on. So <laughs> actually for the girls, too, there's some team on. Like I won also mm-hmm. with the girls team. Uh, I'm just telling the different people to talk. We had, we had a lot of, mm-hmm. I think we had a lot of views on YouTube when it came to that show. And of course, it's always fun. It's just a debate uh, as far as when it comes to these teams. No one's really right or wrong, of course. Uh, however, I, I wanted to take it a step further. I, I just, I, I just wasn't quite satisfied. I wasn't satisfied. Mm-hmm. And so, for your enjoyment or heated discussion, I have a new Magnificent Seven. This is the best ever NENC high school boys basketball players. I know this is hot. Oof. Hot. This is hot. Blazing through my script right now. <laughs> Got a hole in my script. I don't know if I can read the guys. I know them, I know them on the top of my head, though. I can figure this out. This was tough. It took me a few days. A couple were easy. Others, I'm going, oh, that person, I need, a, I need a big guy, or this guy can shoot well, so I have that. So... I've got seven guys, of course, magnificent seven. I've also got a coach. Also going to do an all-time NENC coach. 
So no particular order. You ready to go? Let's hear it. You ready to hear this? All right. Ricky Craniac from Camden. Bruins all-time leading scorer. Played during the mid-2000s for Coach Mark Carnley. Later a standout at Campbell. Hit 89 threes in one season. That record just got broken by Zach Roberson hitting 100. But uh, 89 threes in a season is still just un- unbelievable. So Ricky Craniac, one of the best pure shooters I've, I've seen in this in this corner. Number two, Angelo Sharpless from Plymouth. He was a D1 recruit. I don't know if people tend to forget that, uh, coming out of Plymouth, football and basketball. Won a state title in football. One of those many that Robert Cody is starting to rack up now with the Vikings. Uh, like I said, D1 recruit, but things didn't work out. He ends up going to ECSU, plays for three years. CIAA Player of the Year, 2012. Uh, went overseas, played for German League, and now playing with the Harlem Globetrotters. Very nice. So, and, and look up Angelo Sharples on YouTube. There's some highlight reel dunks. Malcolm, I don't know if you've seen them. I'm not going to look at it now. Yeah. it's uh, Let's finish the show. Okay. That's, I'm excited. He's a uh, human highlight, highlight reel. For this area, just some dunks that just blow your mind. Uh, they are legendary. So, okay, that's two down. Third, Travis Saunders from Curry Tuck. He was the MVP of the Knights' 1986 1A state championship team, later played North Carolina Wesleyan. I've heard he can still whip some youngsters right now. Oh, wow. He can still ball right now. Uh, that, he, he was a heck of a player. Had 18 and 11 in that state championship game, which the little trivia we've always thrown out there, the first ever high school game played at the Dean Smith Center. Dean Dome had just been built in 1986, or completed, of course. And Curry, Tuck, and Orem were the 1As. They started with the 1As, so they were the first tip of a high school game in a cavernous <laughs> Dean Dome, 22,000 uh, people. And, of course, Curry, Tuck had their fans, but not 22,000. I don't know. I don't think there's 22,000 in the county. I don't think there are. Maybe not now. Uh, maybe in the summer with Kerala, if you want to throw them in there with that. But, uh, yeah, Moyak would need to grow a little more, which it is. Could happen. I'm getting off topic. George Ackles from Manio. This guy's the man in the post. This is my big guy. 6'9". He won a national title, Malcolm, as part of that great UNLV squad in 1990. Very cool. Uh, was a senior in the 91 team that lost to Duke in the Final Four. Boo. <laughs> uh, drafted by the Miami Heat, but didn't play in the NBA. Had a solid career overseas. Played eight, ten seasons. I think he transferred into Manio, played a couple years, something like that, uh, until he went off to a community college for a year or two, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, Jerry Tarkanian, who was big on getting guys like that. Mm. He, he would pick up guys that – May have struggled in the classroom. I don't know if George Ackles did, but he was at community college and say, hey, come, come play for, for me. Other people have forgotten about you. I know you're good. And he was an important part of that UNLV squad that 1990 UNLV might have been top five greatest college basketball teams of all time. Might be. It's another list. I'm sure there's some UCLA teams in it. Uh, UNC 2009, just saying. But you know these right in the mix. And George Ackles, again, part of that. All right. A.C. Carver, Northeastern size. Good shooter in the mid-late 80s. Still a top scorer in the history of Old Dominion. Also played overseas a number of years. We know about his kids, Trey and Aaron, uh, playing Division One. Aaron, of course, plays at Old Dominion. Trey for Hampton. Uh, you know where they got it from. And these guys, when they still play in the backyard, they are intense. Yeah. They want to win. So... A.C. Carver, also on the list. Kent Bazemore, Bertie. Oh, kids, you, you see him playing for the Atlanta, Haw- Atlanta Hawks. Just as impressive when he was with the Falcons, trust me. Uh, he, there, there's still a kid that he posterized that's probably still standing on their Bertie court today. Or, or like a windmill dunk he did on the guy. Oh, wow. Kid's probably still, this was 10 years ago. <laughs> He's probably still there. What do I move now? Coach of the game over? Uh, just amazing. Jersey, I think, is retired at ODU. A huge supporter of Bertie, which is great. I love love seeing that. Uh, Bazemore makes trips back to Bertie. I think he's helped with uh, apparel, uh, jerseys, that kind of thing. The man from Kelford, Kent Bazemore. 
And number one, well, I'll say number one. You know what? I'm gonna, this will be the one time I rank it number one. Kenny Williams from Northeastern. Uh, this guy probably make the argument he's the NENC's version of Marcus Dupree. Watch that ESPN 30 for the remind you seen yeah, Marcus yeah, Dupree. Yeah. So now you're getting the picture yeah. of this guy. Um, McDonald's All-American. Same year that you had Alonzo Mourning and Sean Kemp. Uh, Indian River, Alonzo Mourning came and played Northeastern with, with mm-hmm. Kenny Williams. Let me tell you. Packed. Held his own. Packed. <laughs> Uh, a couple main big big college coaches were there. Wow, like Dean Smith, people of that level. Pretty big. It was it was that big. John Thompson, of course. Alonzo Morning said, "I'll go to Georgetown." So, Kenny Williams uh, struggled with academics, and, and it pretty much left him without a college to go to. UNC wanted him. Dean Smith wanted him bad, and that just did not happen. He, he just did not have the grades. He just they had to take they had to say no. And look somewhere else. Um, but he, he bounced around a couple of different colleges. I don't think he ever played really college basketball. And then got a call from the Indiana Pacers. Played a couple of seasons with some of those 90s teams of Reggie Miller, Rick Smith, mm-hmm. and these guys that had the battles of the Knicks. Uh, not like the battles today where Oakley's beating up people in the stands. Poor guy. Um, that's a, I don't want to mess with Charles Oakley, okay? Yeah, I saw I don't him. care how old he is. I mean, he's one of the greats in CIAA history. Yeah. He's played at the Vaughn Center in his day. Played here during one of those ACC CIAA battles. Uh, Charles Oakley, just a straight man. When I saw him, like, kind of, yeah. uh, I'm like, I'm getting away. Yeah. Like, I, did I just beat myself? I mean, this guy, <laughs> he's, he's, he's still scary. Yeah. Yep. So, anyway, Kenny Williams played for the Pacers. I uh, spent a lot of his pro career playing in Israel. I, this isn't about the problems off the court. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of that. It's just to play on it. So if I'm ranking someone number one, I think it's Kenny Williams. And I, if I get arguments for that, that's fine. But you have a hard time. <laughs> you, you're going to have to find somebody big time for me to go, all right, not Kenny Williams. He's just that studly of a player. Okay, need a coach? Not too difficult for me. Lucian Griffin of Curry Tuck. A man behind a, a bevy of wins for his home county, including that '86 state championship, of course. And you, you talk to a lot of coaches here today who's been here, who've been here a number of years. Robert Woodley, Mark Harley, these guys. They will tell you that Lucian Griffin, that they picked up things from Lucian Griffin. I mean, he's just he was that good of a coach, well respected. The gym's named after him at Curry Tuck. This is a guy that I think would be a nice, nice head coach for this team. That's my team. That's it. Seven. Uh, magnificent seven. I have one honorable mention. I threw him off late. Drell Foreman from Perquimans, another center. Double-double machine. Had the Pirates in the 2003 1A State Championship loss to Thomasville. Uh, Drell Foreman for the Pirates. So, I'm trying to think of somebody else off the top of my head right now. And I just can't. And... That's where you come in, listeners. Let, let us know. Let us know who's somebody else that um, bought me over the head. Oh, and how could you forget that guy? Go, go for it. I want to hear it. Um, if you if you had that selection, use that hashtag, NENC Sports. Also use the hashtag Team NENC with that. That will help us maybe sort through it and see uh, who you might have as far as another player. Maybe you'd have to, of course, it's just seven. Who's gonna, who are you going to take off? I don't know who you take off of this. You got your guard play, you got your size, you got a pure shooter. I um, got a great coach who also went to a number of regional finals. Uh, and so it wasn't just that one state championship for Lucian Griffin. He won a number of games. So, again, want to hear from you. And we will be right back. Keep this conversation going right now on our Facebook page. More NENC Sports Radio Show is coming up. I'm a student athlete, which means I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I'm getting important lessons about perseverance, teamwork, determination, respect, and dedication through playing sports in my school. Mom, dad, coach. In a few years, I'll probably forget a lot of the details, but I won't forget the lessons I learned. From the way you act towards my teammates, coaches, referees, and other fans. What kind of lesson do you want me to learn? 
I'm watching. Sportsmanship, together we make the right call. This message has been brought to you by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Baby, don't worry about it. Hate it, don't even think about it. Whew. Hey, I told you that list was hot. Yeah. I told you it was hot. I think we'll get some more responses from that one. Absolutely. I think we'll get a few more. Well, let's check in with Matthew Center Dixon Agua. He's in his first year with the basketball Mustangs. The six seven junior grew up in Nigeria, then Detroit, where he was spotted by Detroit native of Matthew coach Alan Harris. Very well spoken, and glad to uh, give you a chance here to listen to Mister Agua. I'm sure most people look at your your hometown and where you're from, and to come to Elizabeth City, North Carolina, and they probably go, "Wow!" or they or what do they ask you? When they see that. You know, you mean like coming from Michigan? Well, no. from Nigeria, and then Michigan, now here, just all your your different places. Like, you know, you just, I, I don't really pay attention to that. Like, when they ask me, you know, I'll be like, I'm just, you know, here to do, you know, take care of my business, you know, go to school, you know, play ball, you know. What uh, what drew you to Mac U of all places? Oh, um, it was, uh, I think, the connection I had with Coach Harris, you know, when he heard about me, you know, you know, I talked with him and Neil. So they, 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 it, it was really good. Like what they told me, you know, and I like, you know, the school. And my family was into the school too because it was a Christian school, you know. So my dad was, you know, pleased with, you know, what he, um, what he heard about him, you know. So he was like, this would be a good fit for me, you know. To that, come. that being said, what does faith mean to you? Like the Bible says, it's a substance of um, thin hopeful, evidence of thin not seen, you know. So, uh it's just like faith, something you got to believe. You know, you don't have to say to believe in it. You, know, you just got to believe, you know, it's, it's going to happen. It will happen if you believe. How have people taken you here at the school? You've been here long enough now. You've gotten a good idea of yeah. the school and the campus and everybody. Oh, like people here, like they really, you know, love me. Like people, like they really, they really, you know, care about me. You know, they respect me, you know. It's, it's, it's something, you know, to be heard of because everybody like, you know, like the star of the school and something like that, but which I don't see it that way. You know, I see everybody as we are all equal, you know. But it's, it's really a fun place to be, you know. What's one thing that has stood out to you about Mackey? What's one thing that you've done? You know, my girlfriend, because yeah, she's really been a blessing to me in my life since I got, I got here, you know. Tiara Lester, she, she's been a, you know, a great part of my life in Mackey, you know. So I'm loving, from loving basketball. basketball. Yeah, <laughs> I'm back from basketball. She's she's the you know best one of the things that has ever happened to me. Who are your favorite NBA players? Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace. Okay, yeah. going back a little ways. All right. Yeah, but you look kind of like Ben Wallace. Oh yeah, <laughs> bro, I get that right. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people tell me that's really when I have my throw out. You know, this how I play like him too. You know, the only difference with me and Ben Wallace was uh, I I could score better than him. You know. And I had a better footwork, but, you know, he jumps, like, block shots, you know, play good defense. That's just me, you know. So I think and I watch um, Hakeem Olajuwon, too, and Shaq, you know. Most of, most of the time I watch the big um, players because that's the position I play. So I try to watch the things they do, how they play, you know, aggressiveness, how they do everything they do in the basketball court, you know, their IQ. So I try to imitate those things and add it to my game, you know which really helps my game, you know. Your first impression when you came into this gym? Mm. My mind was like, I'm, I'm about to take over. That's the, that's the first thing that came to my mind. I'm about to take over. Because most people look at chess and they go, it's only holds about 80 people. Yeah, you're yeah. right on, everyone's right on top of you. You just yeah. take one little step here and you're going to fall into the bleachers. The thing is, like, it doesn't matter where you, you know, where you are. It's all about what you do where you are. You know, it's not how big the place is. You can you can get a spoil like you can get a exposure anywhere you are. You can make it anywhere you are. It depends on what you bring on the floor. You know. So like my coach Harry's always telling me, I want you to go out there, give your all hundred and ten percent. You know, give your all anytime you're out there. That's the only way you can make it if you're trying to get your name out there. You know, come here, if the ball is on the floor, like I go for everything. You know, rebound, on I don't care where the ball is at. Even if on the floor, I'm diving for the ball because I want it more than every other person in here. I don't know about the rest. You know, 
I'm coming to get everything that said I can't get. That's just my mentality to whatever I'm playing. You're from Nigeria, but it sounds like you haven't spent much time there. What what made you want to come to the United States? My, my, my dad, my parents, you know, they, they felt like this would be a better opportunity for me to come, you know, like pursue my education and my basketball dreams, you know, so they made it, you know, possible for me. My dad, you know, they made it possible for me. He's always been supportive, like really supportive of me, my, my basketball, my mom too, you know, which is, she's my role model, you know, like she's the reason why I do what I do, you know, my mom. How difficult is it for her to still be in Nigeria? You don't get to see her much. Like we get to talk on the phone, you know, but she should be here before this, the, um, before the end of this year. She should be here definitely, you know. But we get to talk on the phone. She's been hearing about it, the things I've been doing here, but, you know, didn't get to see me play, you know. But I can't wait to see her, you know, come out here and watch me play because it would be the best day of my life coming to see my mom play. Like my mom coming to see me play. I'm a, you know, my dad, because my dad watched me every time. He'd be like, I'm proud of you, so, you know, I'm proud of the man you're becoming. I'm proud of what you're doing. Keep doing it. You know, God is your strength. Uh, you know. What are some things people here don't know about Nigeria? Um, they always think. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you get a few <laughs> yeah, stereotypes. Yeah, I get. Like, sometimes I look at them, I'll be like, yo, I got to stop. You know, it's, it's funny, the things to think about. Like, they talk about Tazan. You know, like full of Tarzan? Uh, yeah, jungle, monkeys, lions. I'd be like, it's not like they're like, it's a civilized place, just like America. Like all the things in America is just the same thing over there. You know, there's no difference. The only thing is the weather. You know, snowing down here, it doesn't snow down there. You know, that that's just about it. Like, apart from that, there's yeah, there's nothing, you know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I start laughing whenever, whenever I hear something like that, you know, when they talk about, you know, the monkeys and stuff. I'd be like, you all got to stop, please. Yeah. Like, Stop it. That's know? not necessarily the best thing you want to hear regardless. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. It's not. You, know. you got a basketball tournament here. You have a chance to win yeah. what would be a NIT Bible College National title. Mm-hmm. I know that's something to shoot for. Yeah. Uh, what uh, What do you expect to see in these, these next few days here? Oh, like um, like I said earlier, you know, Coach Harry's been making us go hard, you know, which – we love doing, you know, because we want to win everything, you know. We want to win it all. We want to go to the championship this year. We want to make history in the MAC, you know. So we've been putting in work for that championship for the NIT, NIT in the championship. So I think we, we have a, a great chance to, you know, win it all. We can do it. We just got to come out as a team and play together like we've done this few, you know, games, you know, we won. So I think we can do it. You know, we got to trust the process, you know, believe in the coaching staff because we got great coaches here in the MAC. Like, we got great coaches that believe in us. Like, they make our time, you know, to talk to us, help us in our classes, you know, bring us in the gym, help us one-on-one, you know, work on our, you know, skills. You know, that's 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 what every player needs. You know, if you got coaches like that, you what else can you ask for? So I think we can do it. We can win it all. What's your future here? I'm getting my degree getting my bachelor's degree, graduate, looking to go play pro ball, you know, go overseas, mm-hmm. play, you know, NBA D League or from there to the NBA by the grace of God, you know. So your expectation is to come back next year? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah definitely. That will be my senior, senior year, you know. So definitely I'm, I'm going to come back. That's my expectation. So. A whole lot of basketball. Absolutely. In the northeast corner, Owen Hassel, Malcolm Shields back with you on the show. Time for a Twitter shout. Your tweets go here. Twitter shouts. This from Patrick Maloney. He's at Patrick6070. Those are in numerals. I have Northeastern going against Hereford County going to the finals Friday night. It's a little awkward sentence, but I guess the idea. Cares. He does. Yeah. It is. It's there. You want to use all of them. Northeastern Hereford County seems to be the the game. The third game. Yeah. Uh, who's going to win it? The hard to beat a team three times idea. Unless you're Northeastern and you have big leads and you lose them. Because that's happened twice. It's at Northeastern. No excuses now. And you couldn't get much out of the Pasquatan game. That's not telling you anything. Mm-hmm. You're just hoping no one got hurt. And then what happens? Uh, DeMar Sutton falls down. 
don't know if it's some type of sting or whatever. I think he's okay, but you're jeez in a, in a pretty much meaningless game mm-hmm. up by thirty some near forty points. Um, so hopefully he's okay. He'll be ready to play uh, for the Eagles and into the playoffs as well. Northeastern will be a team I think will be home first round still because of the winning percentage that goes in their favor. Hereford County would be home in the first round because they're a conference champion. And that's the only reason. Because they have more losses than any other conference champion right now. So if it wasn't for that, Northeastern would have that third or fourth spot, maybe. Hereford County would be in the double digits, possibly. That much of a difference. I'm telling you, winning percentage. Crazy thing. Uh, we encourage all of you to tweet about NENC Sports. Yours might get put on the air. You got thoughts? You got questions? We'll do our best to answer them. Bring them up on the show. Use the hashtag NENC Sports. State Wrestling Championships Friday and Saturday coming up. Greensboro Coliseum. My prediction, Malcolm, first flight, three state champions. Is that too much of a prediction? Mm-mm. No, it shouldn't be. That's the only right answer. Uh, Carlos Martinez, 195. Jeremiah Derby, 120. Arian Lee, 106. They have gone through the conference, gone through the regional. No problem. Excuse me, I say 1A, 2A. I got it mixed up with swimming. 2A wrestling championships. I know something didn't seem right about that. The sport's all over the place. Uh, and that would make... Here's something really interesting. When we talk about first flight success this year, it would make for six individual state crowns for the Nighthawks just during the winter season. We know what happened in indoor track. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex Rodman, I think, got what two or three? She had a got a relay championship mm-hmm. and then two long distance runs. Mm-hmm. Three state titles for her, and then you could have three here in wrestling. Martinez and Derby won it last year. Mm-hmm. So there's no reason to think they're not favorites. Uh, Arian Lee, I believe, made the semis last year. He was right there, and so far he's looking very good. So you could have three champs in first flight. Not to mention. The team championship in boys soccer. Correct. During the fall, you could have for first flight state champions in all three seasons. It's impressive. Not many schools here do that. We're not. We're not Carborough. Whatever. Good for them. They got about fifteen thousand banners hanging up in the gym. But uh, when teams can do something similar to that here, it's it's very exciting. And first flight right now would have to be still a. Com- I'm a commanding, but a strong lead in that Wells Fargo Cup for overall athletic program uh, in the Northeastern Coastal and Kirtuck, probably second. Northeastern, I would say third, uh, if we're just predicting right now and take it from there. Pascal Tank, Javion Bass Knight, 120. Anthony Bonner, 182. They're going to states. Uh, Jonathan Ward, Raven Atkins. Ward's at 132. Atkins, 220. They're going from Northeastern. Kirtuck's going to send Albert Harris. Uh, at 220 pounds, ECSU, men's basketball. I can't, that, that's the best way I can transition. ECSU basketball. Yeah, it's just, you know, more and more keeps piling on. Um, I talked with uh, Coach Dunker um, late last week, and he said that, you know, he confirmed that his contract will not be renewed, and he looks like he's going to be moving on from the university. And this is somebody who's been at ECSU for a long time, and, um, just a lot of the off the off the court stuff in terms of his personal life. Um, it looks like it may have cost him his um his spot as as basketball coach. And then on the court, it's been just as difficult this year. And, and the other part's bigger is jobs of teaching because most coaches it's, it's about the teaching. That's where you get most of your most of your salary. The coaching supplements like depends on the coach like ten fifteen thousand right. at, at most. It's that teaching part that's big. Uh, so if you lose all that. It's a hard way to go out. It is. And these are basically at-will contracts. So you just breathe the wrong way. You can be let go. It doesn't necessarily matter what happens in this case. Uh, so that's probably where school's going to stand. And you know, there are other people at this school are doing just fine. But, Dunk, I, 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 you kind of feel for him. A little bit, maybe. Yeah, I mean, you know, you don't want to condone what – He's alleged to have done, but again, um, this is a guy who's put in a lot of time here at ECSU, and he's worked his way up the ranks, you know, from an assistant coach on the men's to, you know, having success with the women, uh, 2013 CIAA Women's Coach of the Year, I believe, and then he got, finally got a shot to lead the men's program, and 
it just seemed like he could never just kind of get a little bit of momentum, get a couple of classes together where he can have his signature on the men's program. Bowie State comes here to play Saturday. Men and women, what what do you see? Uh, for for the for the for the men, will they show up? Will they have some energy about themselves? I mean, on Wednesday they're gonna they're gonna have to face uh Virginia Union on the road. Um, will they show up and have some energy? And hey, for a lot of those guys, it's gonna be their last game. You know, put it on an ECSU uniform. Um, as for the women, they got a shot. They they if they play their type of basketball, slow it down, and you know, keep it in below the fit below fifty. They're gonna have a shot. That's what they want. That's the type of uh, play that type of style they want to play. Mm. Um, if they can get it together, maybe they can steal another uh, conference win. And you got the CIAA tournament. Correct. Next week. Uh, any chance? Women, maybe. It depends on what that matchup is and how the brackets break that break out. If the women, you know, somehow get uh, one of the weaker teams from the from the southern division, hey, maybe they can get a win. Um, the men, you know, again with everything that's been swirling around this men's basketball program, it's it's kind of tough to see them, you know, rallying up to to get another win. Uh, and of course, Mac, you got the Bible College NIT Thursday through Saturday. Mac, you's hosting it have a chance to win that championship. I'm not sure they're going to get into the USCAA National Division II tournament. That's still up in the air, but they know if nothing else, they can play for a tournament right now and play for it at home, uh, and that's going to be big. Uh, they, again, they start playing that on Thursday, and, and hopefully for them, if they're playing Saturday, then they're likely in the tournament championship. Oh, we got to close up. Of course, follow us on Twitter. That's where we get all the... Updated of updated stuff. NENC Sports. I'm at Owen OBX. Malcolm. I'm at Malcolm underscore Shields. For the latest sports updates once again. Uh, if we went beyond the radio time, we apologize. But if you're listening to YouTube, you don't know that. Because you got everything on the YouTube channel. There you go. Uh, search for either WRVS 89.9 or NENC Sports. Rowan Hassel, Malcolm Shields. It's the NENC. And don't you see? Athletes, athletes live, live here. here. NENC Sports Radio Show is produced at the WRVS-FM studios on the campus of Elizabeth City State University.